Hello and welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and a puzzle that I, well, I'm already in love with it. Um, this is Pac-Man Sudoku by Math Pesto, a puzzle we've had recommended to us many times over the last couple of days. I have to say our testers, our testers uh, sent this to me with a warning. They said that the rule set is very long and it depends a bit on how much uh, the sort of the theme, the subject matter uh, tickles your fancy. Well, I am fully tickled and Pac-Man Sudoku must appear on the channel. I simply have to solve this because um, I'm just in love with the idea of it. I'm sort of surprised we haven't seen Pac-Man Sudoku before because, you know, snake drawing would seem to lend itself a bit to Pac-Man, a game I remember fondly from my youth. Um, you know, those early computer games were so incredible and uh, yeah, Pac-Man was right up there. I can remember playing it on the uh, on the arcade uh, at Morecambe. I think that I think that's where we used to we used to go to be by the seaside and go to those early arcades. And oh, my goodness, games like Pac-Man, Joust, um, Donkey Kong, of course fantastic stuff. Uh, now, before I read you the lengthy rules um, and what Matt, Matt Pe Math Pesto has created, let's talk a bit about other things. I'm going to do some birthdays. So a very happy birthday to Blaine, who's turned 27 today. Blaine, I know that you've been in hospital. I hope you're well on the mend by now. Your fiance Val wrote to us and said you'd appreciate a shout out. So happy birthday, my friend. Maverick, I mean, <laughs> that's incredible. And the, I've, I've had the I've had the webcam on for 1 minute 50 seconds and literally it's been quiet with no, you know, airborne activity apart from the occasional insect all morning and the moment moment I start Maverick is in the air ready for the fly past. Anyway, Celine, Celine, you've turned 20 today and I know this because your younger sister Kayla down there in Australia wrote to us um and said you'd appreciate a shout out. I gather the two of you have been watching for years and you especially enjoy the, enjoy the movie length editions. I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether this will be movie length. Uh, it's got four stars out of five on Logic Masters Germany, so it could be quite difficult. Um, but there was one comment on Logic Masters Germany that said something like, this puzzle is easy. I've got no idea why it's rated four stars. We'll see. Um, anyway, Celine, a very happy birthday to you. I gather you're having chocolate cake and a movie today as well. And I was quite amu amused to hear how your your sister Kayla found out you liked uh, Cracking the Cryptic because she went into your room with the purpose of annoying you and found you watching. Um, so <laughs> classic, uh, classic sisters and indeed brothers uh, behavior there. Anyway, Colin, you've turned 24 today uh, and you're an audiobook producer and musician. And I know this because your partner, Gabrielle, wrote to us. Uh, and apparently today, Colin, you're having your mum's famous chocolate strawberry cake. That sounds all right. Lucky you. Um, I hope apart from that, you have a, a great birthday. And then the only other thing I need to mention is, of course, the Planets Suite, our Sudoku hunt, which you've been uh, solving a plenty. Been delighted with the feedback on it. We're, we're reading you a planetary fact every day. Today's fact is about Saturn, um, and it comes from Michael Harvey. Uh, and Michael says that Saturn has a mysterious permanent storm that sits all the time over its North Pole. And it's in the shape of a hexagon, apparently. And it's 20, 29, yes, approximately 29,000 kilometers across. That is quite a large storm. Big enough, in fact, that the Earth could fit within its boundaries. <laughs> Just think about what must be going on in there. That must be fairly hairy. Um, anyway, Michael, thank you, for the thank you for the fact. And if you want to check out the puzzles in, in the Sudoku hunt, get over to Patreon. It's available right now. You've still got plenty of time left to enter the competition, which closes on the 20th. Now, now I'm going to get to solve Pac-Man Sudoku. Let's see what Math Pesto has in store. I will read you that the, these rules are quite long, um, but we, we're going to we're not going to worry about that today. So normal Sudoku rules apply. 
the leftmost and rightmost cells of a row are considered orthogonal are, are considered orthogonally adjacent for the purposes of all rules below so what that means is that the the grid sort of you know, toroidal from that perspective I, which is classic pac-man isn't it so you can go off the edge of the grid on the right and pop back in on the left or vice versa go off here and come back in here all of that is possible cells joined by a white dot contain consecutive digits and that explains oh i've just realized when i turned on the webcam because i'm so used to just i just box the sudoku i've only just included this white dot that sits on the edge of the grid so that cell and that cell contain consecutive digits so i was just about to say if that's a one i think that has to be a two is how i understand that rule to work i hope that's right um should almost have a circle on this side as well that might i might maybe i'll i'll put one in afterwards assuming i can solve this um because that, that would seem that would seem to be the logical implication um not all white dots are necessarily given okay so it's perfectly possible for example for that to be a nine and be consecutive with eight just because there's no white dot doesn't mean these can't be consecutive shade some cells in the grid and leave the rest unshaded such that all shaded cells are orthogonally connected okay so orthogonally connected means shares shares an edge so we're going to have to shade some cells such that we achieve orthogonal connection so if we left one shaded cell there and the rest of the grid was shaded we would not have obeyed the rules because this cell is not orthogonally connected to all of the other all of the other gray cells uh, oh and no two by two region is entirely shaded okay so when we do this we can't do that for example that's not going to work uh, okay let's go <laughs> right a cell containing pac-man there blinky pinky inky or clyde now i'm not i'm not a fay enough with my uh, Pac-Man law to know what the colours are. So the the actually yellow might be blinky. So that might be blinky. Yellow, red, which is pinky presumably. Oh no, that one looks pink. Oh, I don't know then. Inky. It says inky is pink. Oh no, yellow is Pac-Man. Obviously, yellow is Pac-Man. I'm just misreading this. Yellow is Pac-Man. Blinky is red. Pinky must be pink. That must be right. Blue is inky okay blue ink that makes sense and clyde is orange look that oh, that one looks like it's yellow to me but anyway that one is clyde um okay a cell containing any of these so the ghosts or pac-man or part of a white dot must be shaded so we're going to know a lot of shaded cells at the start so i see because it's saying that cell only has p half of a white dot in it but it's still considered shaded for the purposes of the rules um i was going to mention actually that my only the only thing that time i think i've seen pac-man recently is i read um ready player one a couple of years ago that is a fantastic book um harks back to all things 80s in a very very nostalgic way um, made into a film I didn't love so much but that definitely had although uh, the book definitely had Pac-Man in I can't remember if the film did um, a cell containing a killer clue okay so a killer clue let's actually I don't know if the rules say what a killer clue is but a killer clue is one of these cells with uh, a number in its top left corner a cell containing a killer clue must remain unshaded digits may not repeat within an orthogonally connected area of unshaded cells and they sum to the killer clue. Note, unshaded regions may not touch each other orthogonally and not all regions necessarily have a killer clue. Right, okay. Uh, so some of these killer clues are going to have, yeah, we're, we're going to build up regions of unshaded cells. So imagine that was a region of unshaded cells and it was surrounded entirely by shaded cells those four cells would add up to 24 is i think what we've been told although let's actually deal with another thought i've just had which is in that situation what you also wouldn't be able to do is to repeat a digit those two digits couldn't be the same because that cell 
uh, is part of this unshaded region and it says that digits cannot repeat within an unshaded region. So that's another little nicety of the rules. Starting in row 5, column 2, Pac-Man must travel orthogonally through the grid. His path may not touch itself orthogonally, although it may do so diagonally, and the path cannot intersect or overlap itself. Pac-Man must go directly through each white dot, Oh, that's which is lovely, it's very thematic, isn't it? Although were the dots in Pac-Man white? I can't remember. Um, don't think they were. Mm, not sure. Um, his path is completed immediately after going through the final dot. Pac-Man's path cannot be orthogonally adjacent to any of the ghosts. Red, pink, blue or and orange. Okay, yeah. Nor can the path enter unshaded cells. Right, so Pac-Man is going to go through the grid picking up the dots and being careful not to go too close to the ghosts and not entering unshaded cells. Um, and somehow or other this is going to solve. <laughs> Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. I'm just trying to, I'm just, I was just reading the rules again then. I get a, th a three in the corner, no song for it, but there is a three straight away in the corner, which sort of, I mean, that means that in order to have a party today, that will have to be a three, which will be, well, we'll be lucky if, though, if we get, if we get that one to be a three. Now, okay, let's, let's actually, let's go through the rules in terms of what, because it, it gave us some shading, didn't it, right at the start. I think it said white dots had to be shaded. Um, uh, killer clue cells are unshaded, so let's have an unshaded color. All of those will make green for unshaded. Um, yeah, okay, Pac-Man and the ghosts and, and the white dots are all shaded. I've, I've put this one in because I'm assuming that that's what that means. These two are connected orthogonally and therefore this one, yeah this one really I think ought to have a little bit of a white dot on it for that the purposes of this rule. I'm going to keep an eye on this cell. Um, the way I read the rules this one does see a bit of a white dot because this one is orthogonally connected to this one. And therefore there is a white dot, although it's invisible, sort of poking in on the left side. But I think, actually, I would have preferred that white dot to be there. Now, you can't have a 2x2 two two shading of, um, of uh, shaded cells, so that's got to be unshaded. And I remember it saying that two regions of unshaded cells cannot touch each other orthogonally. So if this was green the 15 region and the 14 region would connect. So that's got to be shaded. Now, also, we have to connect all of the shaded cells together in an orthogonal region. Now, this cell has to get out, therefore, because there's no, there was no uh, wrapping vertically. At least I didn't think there was by the rules. I'm just going to double check that. Let, no, it's leftmost and rightmost cells of the grid. So we've got this way, we've got wrapping, but vertically, we have not got wrapping. Uh, no, we can't do anything with that one. Um, oh dear, <laughs> now we're going to be stuck. Uh, well, that's got to grow. Actually, both of these have got to grow because they've got to contain digits that add up to 15 and 14, and that's going to require at least two cells. Right, okay. Uh, 38. That's an enormous region and it can't touch this. It can't. It can never get to that cell. And I was just looking at the other side of the grid, look. This 38, it cannot, it cannot take this cell. And if it goes there, that cannot take this cell. So 38, let's work it out. It's at least six cells, isn't it? Because we could make it with five, six, seven, eight, nine, and a three. So it's at least six cells. It can take one cell beneath it. So it must take that cell. Now the problem there, oh, maybe I can get it to take this one as well because it could from here go to there. 
But if it did go to there, it couldn't go to there because it would meet the 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So it does still have to go at least, I think, at least to here. I'm just going to double check this. 1, 2, 3, 4 is possible. 5 is possible. That's still not big enough. So it does have to take that one as well. Um, right. And now I can see Pac-Man. Yeah, okay. This is clever. And not of me, I should hasten to add. But the Pac-Man now is not allowed to go too near the ghosts. So how is Pac-Man going to get out of box four and go and pick up dots? I think Pac-Man's got to go through that cell. Um, so we should use the um, line drawing tool. If you can't see how to do this, by the way, just click the uh, cog icon by your grids and it enable pen tool. You can see I have everything enabled um, all the time. So. Um, but this allows me to click on one of the icons on the right and then I can sort of drag drag lines around the grid. So, I mean, what we could do here, it might get a bit cluttered, but we could obviously we could obviously do this sort of thing. It might be worth doing, actually. The Pac-Man, not only can the Pac-Man not go in green cells, but the Pac-Man can't go in orthogonal, orthogonal cells to the ghosts. So the Pac-Man, you can see, has to go there, then there, then there. So, right, which means all of those are shaded. Now, if all of those are shaded, now we've got to avoid a 2 by 2 So I suspect all these are now going to turn green. That's got to turn green to avoid a 2 by 2 Pac-Man's got to keep going because Pac-Man's penned in by greenlinesses. Pac-Man is now in this... What was there? There was some rule about... If you go near a dot, you have to collect it immediately or something. Um, the Pac-Man Pac must go directly through each white dot. I think, I think what that means is, is the Pac-Man has to do that. I don't know what that's going to mean for this, though. Hmm. I think the problem is, if the Pac-Man doesn't, if the Pac-Man goes like that, say, and then out there, whoa, out, out on this side, then when, when the Pac-Man does that, the path is touching itself orthogonally, isn't it? So that that's probably not allowed, and that would make sense with the rule saying that the Pac-Man the Pac-Man has to sort of go through each dot directly. Because, I mean, if the Pac-Man's path is a full one cell wide, then the Pac-Man has picked up half of a dot here by entering this cell. So I think it makes sense that the Pac-Man has to finish chomping, if you like, and eat the whole of the dot. Now, what, I, what I'm now thinking, though, is that can we say... Can we say this is the end of the path... I mean, how am I going to get this dot now? I don't see any way of getting it because there's no vertical wrapping unless unless the last move the Pac-Man makes is is that move, which which it's going to have to make from this square. So that square, I think, has to be grey. I can actually, that the Pac-Man is going to have to go there now, because if the Pac-Man goes down, then then the Pac-Man will have to turn here. Why do I see, keep using the? It's not the, it's just Pac-Man. Um, and this path is touching itself orthogonally, which is one of the conditions we can't we can't have can't have applying. So the Pac so Pac-Man now goes here. Pac-Man goes here. Pac-Man's Pac path is being very, very tightly controlled. Um, oh, I tell you what's also happening. This 34 cage, that's got to grow a lot. That's got to be at least five cells. So it's got... Right, so this is going off the edge of the grid. That's only three cells. So that's got to be... That's got to be part of the 34 cage. That's got to be shaded. That's We need at least five cells in the 34 cage. But Pac-Man needs to get to this square. So Pac-Man's going to have to do this. And that's going to turn all of these grey. Um, right. And now we can do pencil marking for this... Um, 
this cage, I might get rid of that X there. Um, hang on, let me try and do that. Because those five cells, there's only one way to make five cells add up to 34 using different Sudoku numbers. So that's got to be four, six, seven, eight, nine. That's got to be green to avoid a two by two. That's got to orthogonally connect to its friends, so we can go there. 24 has got to be at least three cells, so that's got to go there. So it could it could stop there with if it's seven, eight, nine. That's now got to bend up, which means Pac-Man's path is forced. Now, oh, so we've got an eight here preventing this from being a single cell cage. So now if it goes, if it took that one, it would be a three cell cage and it would have to, that would all be all it could have because you can't make four different Sudoku digits add up to only eight. Oh, oh, 23. Where's that getting at least three cells from? It's going, it's getting them from there. And we know exactly the composition of this. It must be six, eight, nine, and that's not eight by the power of Sudoku. So I've been made to do Sudoku already 21 minutes into the video absolutely ludicrous math pesto um now this is that's got to be path hasn't it because pac-man pac-man well this is the last move pac-man makes so pac-man has to go and get these before making pac-man's descent down column eight so this, this Pac-Man's got to go up here and go over here and then come out here and then come down here. And But that's we've got to avoid a two by two. So, ah, but do we know? Yeah, I'm wondering if Pac-Man, yes, Pac-Man does definitely have to come down column nine because now this is sort of a cold, well, it's, this is a crossroads or a, a junction. If we turn that way, we're touching this cell, which would force the Pac-Man's route to be like that. And Pac-Man hasn't picked up these dots. So Pac-Man has to go there, uh, has to continue because there's no possibility of going in on the right hand side. Now this square is out of bounds for Pac-Man because it would, the path would touch itself. So Pac-Man goes there. Oh, I've made a mistake here. I ah, no, okay, I can do it. Ah, this is huge, right. Um, I suddenly got worried then, because if, you, if we look, if we look carefully at the middle of the grid here, if I, if I X out all of the cells Pac-Man can't visit, I would do that. It can't go through a green cell and it can't go through a ghost. And that look has created a wall through which Pac-Man cannot go. And yet Pac-Man has to go and collect these dots. So actually, I think we've got to think quite carefully about this because in order for the path not to cross itself, I can I can come into box one using these cells in box three and, and coming off the edge of the grid. But if I was to do that, if I was to exit the grid here and go like this, then this path, Pac-Man's path would, would go something like this and then it would have to cross itself in order to, to get back to column nine. So I think what we've got to do is actually to go in there. We've got to we've got to somehow go through the three in the corner, come out here, and then go back in here on the on the on the right hand side, and presumably down there because that's the path. How the path that that once that cell's on the path, it's touching this cell that's on the path. So actually, we can make that grey. Um, we've got to get into, well, I know that three is on the, on the path and I know this cell is on the path. So actually the path must do that and can't, can never come here now, which means that the path must go through here 
and not go there because I need I need the this to join up with this without touching this. So the path doesn't go there. It goes here, which means we can turn this grey. And right, so let's just double check this works. The path's going to somehow join up here. We go in there. We can make both of those grey. We go round here. I don't think. Yeah, I, I I remember this from other puzzles. You can't you can't do lines that's just to indicate that the path's going, you know, towards the border there. Um, so Pac-Man has to go up. Which, which gives us more graying in the middle of the grid. Pac-Man has to keep going up. That creates a two by two. And there we go. So we've actually, we've actually got the path completely forced. Now it's all looking a little bit messy now in terms of how we're going to actually, oh, right. I was about to say, how are we going to know how to plot the remaining bits and pieces? But I can see something I've got a two cell eight cage there. If that was green or that was green, it would create a four cell eight cage, which cannot exist. So both of those must be great. That's gorgeous, which means both of those are green because to avoid two by twos. And the entire final four columns are now are fixed. Now that must, yeah, that's green to avoid a two by two. 16 cage must grow at least one cell oh that's look no it must it must grow exactly one cell because otherwise it's going to bump into the 38 cage this is very carefully done isn't it this isn't orthogonally connected to its friends yet so that forces another another little expedition this oh yeah yeah that one's not orthogonally connected to its friends and it can't orthogonally connect here because that's green so that's got to go up there this 38 cage is no longer big enough it needs to be at least six cells so it's tough to take that one and it can't bump into the 14 that's created a near two by two this isn't connected to anything there we go a flurry of activity finishes um finishes the snake drawing exercise we now understand exactly how Pac-Man wins the game. And, oh no, we don't have a 24 cage there. We have a one, there must be a one in the eight cage. Uh, because, oh, that's clever. Huh. Um, the, um, because the eight cage, a uh, three cell eight cage must have a one in it. If you add two, three and four together, you get nine, which is bigger than eight. There is a knowledge bomb. The, the ghosts have been rather, um, rather greyed out, haven't they? But I can see them. A 16 cage in two cells must be a 7-9 pair, which does a little bit of work at the bottom. So there's definitely a 9 in this domino. Oh, 14 cage with no 8 in it is 5-9, isn't it? That means this square is a six. That's our first digit. That's an eight. This is a nine. Eight now is not in those cells of this 34 cage, this sort of 34 cage, which, which crosses the edge of the grid. So there is an eight up here. Uh, can't put eight. No. What about... Um, right, the 38 cage. Let's label that. Oh, in fact, look. I can do something very cute with that 38 cage because what digits make up 38 in six cells is well it's actually got to be five six seven eight nine and an extra three there is no degree of freedom so it's got an eight in it and that eight now has to go there um so the rest of these digits are the other digits six seven it's those digits now can we yeah we can get rid of nine from that one Uh, one, two, four, eight. No, not one, two, four, eight. Oh, well, it depends what that digit is, actually. Um, sorry, I'm not seeing how to do this at the moment. Seven, nine here, they come out. Ha <laughs> ha. 
Um, what on earth do we do now? Oh, I've got an eight cage here that can't have five or six in it. So that's got to be one seven. That means that's not seven. Uh, now I've got a three, five, six triple in this, uh, in this 38 cage. So these squares have got to be a seven, nine pair, which does absolutely nothing apparently diddly squat um this 15 cage well it's either six nine or seven eight we had a lot of that yesterday but the nine can't go there so the six can't go here um three we, have, we could still get a three in the corner actually a three in the corner would be on a dot so that square would have to be two or four nah, it's still possible oh all right so we've actually got six digits in column five i suddenly noticed so we've got to put two three and four into the balancing squares and that's not three so there's definitely a three down here This is actually, um, this is suddenly not so easy. Uh, not that it was easy at the start, but I think there was, there was quite a lot of rules to achieve this pattern. Ah, okay. Right, Sudoku is helping me. There's an eight up there. I can't actually put eight on the dot because what would the 8 have to have with it as, a, as its consecutive digit? It would have to be 7 or 9, which are unavailable. So I can actually get 8 in the top row, which means my 15 cage is now 6, 9. It can't be 7, 8 anymore, and we know the order. Whoopsie, that's got to be the 6, because it can't be the 9. That's got to be a 9. That's great. Okay, so then we get the 9 and the 7 of the 16 cage. We get the 9 and the 5 of the 14 cage. We've got four, ah, we've got four nines. We've got the bones of a nine pencil mark in box five. Oh, nine. Ah, yeah, okay. I'm going to look at nine in box six. Because can I put nine on this dot? And the answer is no, because I'd have to have eight on the dot. And there's an eight in one of those two squares. So nine is in one of those two squares. That's OK. That's lovely, actually. That is lovely. Because now by Sudoku, nine is in one of these two squares, where I've also got pencil marked an eight. So if those two squares have to include an eight and a nine, we can change, we can change our notation, can't we? That is an eight, nine pair. Nine comes out of these squares, which makes this a four, six, seven triple. Ah. That's absolutely beautiful. Now, now we are actually, we are, I'm almost hopeful there could be a three in the corner. Because what do we know about any white dot in Sudoku? Well, it contains consecutive digits. Therefore, it contains an even and an odd digit. And in terms of even digits, four, six and eight are unavailable. So there's a two on this dot, which means it's either got one on it or three on it. Ah. Uh. Um, right, that was nearly good, but not quite good enough. Oh, bobbins, right, okay. Um, same trick doesn't work on that, on that white dot because it's cross box, so we can't we can, you know we don't know that the the even digit on it has to be in this square well in fact in fact we do know it's not in that square i suppose because we know that two is locked down here don't we so we know this is an even digit and it's not six <laughs> that's that's not going to do it uh do we know where 
80s anywhere. Oh, nearly, well, nearly. I nearly know where 8 is over in this box, I've suddenly realised. 8's in one of two places. Uh, no, I can't see how to do that. Right, this digit is, we know this is 2, 4, or 8. So if I could, if I could get rid of 8 from here, I'd have a 2, 3, 4 triple. How do we stop that being an 8? We, we, could, we could do that if we could resolve these in a specific way. Yeah, that's funny. I've actually sort of, I've, I've alighted on something by accident here. Look, 9 in this box, which has been available for ages by Sudoku. Oh no, I thought I, thought I was going to do it. It doesn't do it. Oh no, all right, that's annoying. Okay, that's so what I was saying was in fact not proved by what I was trying to do. But we, we still got a little bit of Sudoku done and that, for that we should be grateful. How many nines have we got? We've got quite a lot. Oh, I see, I think we've got seven and these are the remaining two nines. But they, they don't look like they're going to be impacted by white dotage, do they? So probably that's these are going to have to be disambiguated by Sudoku. Um, ah, the 24 cage doesn't have a nine in it now. Does it have to have an eight in it? Seven, six, five. Oh, it, it very much does, actually. It very much does. Right, the 24 cage, if it was 7654, it would only add up to 22. So it has got an 8 in it, and it, the 8 is in one of those two positions. I would love to know which one of those was correct. Don't know if I know. I don't know if I can tell that. But my other thought there was: Does it have to have seven in it? Because if it was not, if it didn't have seven, it would be eight, six, five, four at a maximum. Fifteen, twenty-three. That's not enough. So there is a seven in here as well. So there is an eight and a seven in this cage. That's a dreadful pencil mark I've just drawn. Let me just see if I can see anything as a result of that. I think I have to remove that pencil mark. That's just pencil marking in a corner cross box is totally anathema to what a corner pencil mark is meant to indicate. If you look at the, I mean, I've, done, I've actually done it incorrectly here as well. So I, I'm not, I'm not making the best case for it. But what I'm, what a corner pencil mark is meant to be is a box specific pencil mark saying that that digit can only go in those positions within the box so using it in three different boxes is completely and utterly ludicrous five has to be vertical in that box that's hugely powerful actually <laughs> that's putting a five there which means that's a three six pair oh Yes, that's brilliant. Right, so three is now on this dot where we know there was a two. So that's a two, three pair, and this is a one, five pair. This has been very cleverly done, hasn't it? It's, it's, it's not simple, this. Now, if that's one or five, that, that can't be eight. That's, we've done it. Because eight is not consecutive with one or five. So that's the eight. And if that's the eight, that's not, oh, this is gorgeous. This is gorgeous, right, because look what's happening. Not only, oh, we, we can't do that dot, but, but I'm not so bothered about that because getting this as an eight, which is, which forced by the fact eight is in one of those two positions can no longer be here. That stops that being an eight, which forces the eight in box six to be here, placing the nine, placing the nine over here. All the nines are now done. We looked at this earlier. The eights are, yes, where's eight in box three? Well, it's not in an eight cage because we can't fill both of those with zero. So that's an eight. This is an eight. How many eights have we done? One, two, three, all the eights. So all the eights and the nines are done out of absolutely nowhere. Now also we've got a two, three, four triple here. 
So we've not placed 1, 5, and 7. Oh, it's near. It's near 1, 5, and 7 to place, and that can't be 5. Can't see it. Okay. Um, or, oh, I was about to say something that was not going to be true. And that would not be a sensible thing to do. Um, no, I was suddenly remembering that there has to be a 7 in this 24 cage. And I was thinking, oh, that's really helpful. Because that puts a 7 on this dot. But it doesn't, does it? I mean, if the 7 is in those two cells, it, then it does put a 7 on the dot. And this would be a 6-7 pair. But if that's the 7, that's a very different thing altogether. Um, right, okay, so we have to think again. Six in this box is very nearly restricted fully. It's got, it's got one degree of freedom. It's in one of two places. Um, <laughs> okay. Oh, I see. Okay, now I can pencil mark those squares, which I wanted to do earlier, but realized I couldn't because I didn't know what this was. These are one, two, four, and five. So the one and the five are certainly over on this square, uh, this side of the grid. Right, so one in row four is in one of those three squares which is impinged a bit by the... I'm going to change pencil marking to be consistent with what I should be doing. There is a one in one of those three squares. Now, oh, okay, I'm, I'll note this because I've just noticed it. It might not be important yet, but look, one, three, and nine are not on this white dot. Now that white dot needs to have an odd digit on it. So that white digit is now five or seven. So if it's if it's seven, it can't go with eight, so it would have to go with six. If it's five, it could go with six or four. Can it go with four? Maybe. So that's good. That is quite restricted now. Four, five, six or seven are the only options. That's really close to doing things. It's really close to doing things. I can't see how to make it. I don't know if it's actually restricted enough though. Two. Two in the final column is in one of three places. Right, okay. All right, let's take stock. What what do we need to do now? How do we do this? What is it we're missing? Um, probably many things, but let's try and let's try and figure this out. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Ah. Ah. Yes, got something good. Right. So, uh, I'm actually going to take you through my entire thought process for this because I'm not sure whether it's instructive, but in my brain I've been doing a few things there that are actually, that have proved to be useful. So, I was remembering I have to put a 7 in here. Um... And I was because I was and I was thinking about that in the context of this dot. And that got me thinking about could I lock a seven into the bottom row down here? Because I was noticing there was a seven in box seven in those squares, and then I was examining this one five seven triple. And actually, if you look at this one five seven triple a little, there is something interesting in this row. There is a one five seven triple, the seven of which is in this box. Because this can't be a 7. 
So as there's a 7 in one of those two squares, there is not a 7 in that square. Now that means that the 7 in row 9 is in one of these three squares. And that means the 7 in the 24 cage is there. And if the 7 in the 24 cage is there, well, actually it does some things. It does some things, simple things. It does a lot of simple things, which is very, very magnificent. But also it takes 7 off this, which means there is definitely a 5 on here now. And in fact, two, four, five. In fact, that's a, so this is gorgeous because because we got this, we got a two, four, five triple here. That became a six, which means that's a five. And all of a sudden, this um, right hand side of the grid is substantially done. And yeah, okay, where does the three go? In fact, that's a six. That's a six. That's a three. That's a three. That's all just Sudoku. A flurry of Sudoku, no less. Whoa, 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 whoa. I wanted to put two, a 2-4 two, pair in there and somehow shanked. And that's a 2 or a 4, look. So these are 1, 2, 3 and 4, and that's not 3. Um, what about this 24 cage then? We've got 15 in it, so these add up to 9, and they're not 1, 8, or 2, 7. So this is either 3, 6, or 4, 5. I'm just going to put that in and see if we can eliminate anything there. And the answer seems to be no. <laughs> um, bobbins, 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 bobbins. Hmm, okay, sorry, I was hoping for I was hoping for better. Alright, well I'm going to do more Sudoku then. I know this is I know this is very unlike me, but where does six go in that box? Six can't go in an eight cage, but because that's going to be either one two five or one three four. So six has to go there, and if six has to go there, six is now in this domino which means that's a three six pair which means which is great okay because now you can't put three in the eight cage look because this square can't be a three and these can't be three so this eight cage is one two and five which means these two squares are from one two and five there's definitely a five in this domino which means there's a five in the corner of the grid up here this is not a five so this is a five using pencil marking um Where's the three in this row? It seems to have to be there. This is one, this is one, four or five. So there's definitely a two in this domino. Oh no, that's not true even. Sorry, I'm talking absolute nonsense. Right, okay, well we're still, we're still in reasonable shape. We might now have used all of our, I think we've used all our killer cages. So in theory, oh, we've not used all our white dots. All right, so we've still got to white dot it up somehow. Okay, I've got to remember that this is on a white dot. So that could be, I'm not sure, I'm not sure whether it's better to look at this one or to look at this one. I feel like, all right, let's look at this one first, actually, because I can see something about this one. This needs an odd digit. And the only odd digit I think we can put on it is a three. So these, these squares are from two, three, and four, which gives us a lovely triple in the box which means those squares are one and six, which means that's a four at the bottom of the grid. So we get a six, seven pair here. Is that useful? Um, well, the four is useful. That gives me a two and a four. That gives me a two here. So this becomes a three, four pair. That becomes a two. We need to put a two in this eight cage. So that becomes one and five. The two does the two and the four, and that does the four here. So this is a one. Um, the box up here needs two, four, and seven in it. So that's two or four. 
two, four, seven. Let's just put in all the options and see what we can eliminate. Oh, oh, there. Well, that's done it. Okay, look at this. Look at the white dot that's hard to see. The crossing of row three, column one, and row three, column nine. And ask how those two become consecutive. Well, I think the only way now is if that's six and that's seven. Now, which makes this a one which by Sudoku makes this a 1, which makes that a 7, that a 7, that a 6. We've now got a 1, 5 pair in this column. So this is a 3, 7 pair. Let's put that in. So this square is 2 or 4. Oh, this white dot might have to do some work, maybe. Let's have a think about that. Now I've got a 1, 5 pair in the bottom row. So I've not put 7 in. And I've not put four in. So these are four and seven. And these are one, five, and two. Hmm. Two, five. So the two in this box is vertical, which means that square becomes a four. That becomes a two. That's a four. That's a two. That's a two, which is going to fix this white dot. I can see that. Let's just see if there's any, anything, any other easy wins. That gets me the 2 in box 9. This 2 forces this to be 1, this to be 5, this to be 5, this to be 1, this to be 5, this to be 1. That's 4, that's 3, that's 3, that's 6 using this. We've still not figured out... That, oh, no, yeah, we have. Look, look, look. Maybe I should leave this to last, but look. That's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight, losing its religion. Thank you very much, Math Pesto. That, well, that was a late treat. Uh, this is this is finished, I think. That might be it. We might have just a flurry, a flurry of activity. Yeah. Oh, yes. Game over. High score. Some 64,289,000. No, I think I got... Did I get the millions wrong then? Yeah, there's, there's more digits than that. 642,893,517. I don't know. Is that the highest score you can get in Pac-Man? It might well be. I should know that. That was in Ready Player One. A perfect, There is a perfect game of Pac-Man. I don't know what it is. I don't know what a perfect game of Pac-Man is. I don't know... I don't. I can't even remember what happens when you finish a round of Pac-Man. I'm sure I did achieve that at one one stage. I don't know if you. I, I don't know. Anyway, the, we we got the high score. Fantastic. Well done. Well done, me. Um, that was that was just great, wasn't it? That was is a. It was a lot of rules, but it didn't matter. And in fact, the actual sort of killer Sudoku that emerged from the Pac-Man was very entertaining indeed. It was a really good puzzle. Um, that's just just lovely. It's just a lovely bit of nostalgia. Very much enjoyed it. Um, let me know in the comments whether you had a go. I hope you did and I enjoy the comments especially when they're kind and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.